Today we have two versions of macOS 15 Sequoia that have been released and in this video I'm simply going to be showing you everything that's new with these updates. If we go into our system settings and then go to general and software update you can see we have a new software update page that's available that's now showed up and this is macOS 15.1 beta 3 and depending on the beta profile that you're using you will also see the latest beta of macOS 15.0. So for me if we click on the more info tab right here you can see that macOS Sequoia 15.1 beta 3 comes in at exactly 2.29 gigs and I'm updating for macOS 15.1 beta 2. It's good to see that Apple is adding more descriptions when it comes to these OS releases. Just to keep you in the loop, you can see that this is not all that Apple released. In fact, they released a number of other OSs such as iOS 18 beta 8. We also have iOS 18.1 beta 3 alongside the iPad OS version and of course macOS 15.1. This is the video for that. We also have iPad OS 18 beta 8 to go with the associated iOS version and macOS 15 beta 8 and we have tvOS 18 beta 8 alongside the visionOS related version and there is no watchOS beta that was released. So most of these updates that you see here on the channel I do cover at half man half tech so if you want to stay up to date and get to know what's new within these OS releases then definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss out. My device right here is up to date and here you can see the new build number that we have 24B5035E so it now ends with an E and in terms of stability it shows that we might not be yet closer to an RC version but now let me show you some of the new features and changes that this update has to offer. We'll begin with the app store that you see right here so when you open up the app store for the first time you're going to come up to a new splash screen that looks like this. The change that Apple has made here is actually giving users the ability to download larger file games and apps and at the same time large games and apps now need less free space to be installing and you can pause and resume download anytime so if you click continue right here you can see they've also added some other updates or Apple apps such as um, Final Cut Pro and iMovie I recently updated these and now there's more bug fixes for these as well but a change that was recently added right here that isn't even mentioned in the pop-up screen you can see that you have this new option in settings that Apple has added that says a allow download and install large application to a separate disk. So now if an application or software is larger than one gig, you have this option to directly download it to an external disk instead of it going into your internal driver and this is something that's good and if you have a disk that's connected you can be able to do that and this is something that's definitely going to help those users that have Macs that are like 256 gigs. Before this update came out on the App Store if you wanted to download an app let's say for example that was 5 gigs in order for you to download and install the app the App Store required you to have storage on your disk that's twice the size of of the application or software you're trying to download and install. So if you're trying to download the five gigs app, you needed at least to have a minimum of 10 gigs and more. But now with this update going forward, that's no longer the case and it won't require as much storage as you can see. Now, speaking of Max, I wanna show you this article that highlights an important update that could possibly be coming to the new M4 Max hopefully this year and that is the fact that they could be starting off with a base model that would have 16 gigs of RAM going forward so before it used to be 8 gigs and hopefully this is true and Apple doubles down on the RAM requirements. If you open up the photos application on your Mac I'll do so right now you can see we have a new pop-up screen and it's going to tell you about new collections that allow you to browse your library by recent days and your favorite group of people's as well as trips and there's more utilities such as documents receipts and more and you have featured photos, photos highlights the best photos from your library and if I click get started 
boom. Now, another change that has been added to photos is this new cleanup feature. And something different about this is that when you try and do a cleanup, you can see that it's going to download. And then after download, it's going to do cleanup. And this is all thanks to the Apple intelligence and machine learning that is being improved on Mac and Apple devices. So you saw how it downloaded. And once you've done the cleanup, you can click down and see your final product. But if you want to access it, you have to go to where it says edit on your pictures and you'll be able to see it right on the top section here that says clean up and what you can see here you can use your cursor to clean up different items and if you have it selected you'll be able to clean it up like this so if i try that again we're trying to clean it up but you can see now the text is gone and if i click done this is our final product also apple is including different tags to show if an image has undergone cleanup to help users be able to differentiate if we try to clean up this picture open it up and then go to the edit for example let's say i want to hide this cup so i'll go to where it says cleanup and now i can use my cursor to be able to highlight it and it's cool you can see that it's showing me different items that i can clean up so if we select this boom it's gone now my pen is gone if i just click on this suggestion right there you can see it's able to detect it and clean it up if i click on this hmm, it doesn't do the best job and this is how it looks maybe if i try and select again let's see how this looks it it's not being able to clear this uh yellow text that i have here so it has its up and downs and it has the things that it's able to use or work best at so that is clean up for you on mac os 15.1 keep in mind that in order for you to see this you need to have a device that's on mac os 15.1 and a mac that has apple silicon or apple m1 going forward now apple recently made a change to this uh, messages application so on the emoji tab right here you can see that they have been enlarged a little bit compared to the previous small size that we used to have so this one looks good and it's perfect on this display as well on mac os 15.1 1.1 is more just like mac os 15.0 i'll be happy to let you know that some of the wallpapers that were removed has also been added so for example this pro black uh, wallpaper was removed but it's in it's been added back and at the same time they've added different variants of mac os sequoia screensaver so you have sequoia sunrise you also have different sequoia such as sequoia morning and you have sequoia night which you can see right there if you open up the maps application you will come up to a new plus screen that looks like this and it's introducing custom roads you can build any kind of walk from nature hikes to city straws create custom routes whenever you request walking direction and this is how the pop-up screen is going to look when you open up the voice memo application as well you see a new pop-up screen that's going to tell you about new transcripts stereo recording and savers where you can save into different formats as well when you open up the apple news application as well you are going to be welcomed by apple news like this and there's going to be a new pop-up screen and once you click continue as well you see this pop up and you can now continue with your apple news application or different articles another recent change that apple made to apple music is giving the users to be able to transfer apple music playlist to and from apple music or youtube music rather but not spotify at the time i'm recording this video so if you're a spotify user like myself that's soon to be coming hopefully another change i wasn't able to cover before i started recording is the new pop-up screen that safari has so once you update on mac os 15.1 you'll see a new pop-up screen on this home page that's going to tell you all about the safari and the new updates and at the same time you can see the version of safari that we have that has been updated it's version 18.1 and it has the build number 2062 19.2.1 which is also another build as well if you want to read more about the recent updates and changes you can be able to find more information on this about the release of the new safari just to keep you in the loop in case you didn't know you can see that here on september 9th at 
10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or I believe it's 12 Eastern, you can see that there's going to be a new Apple event right here and it's going to be called Glow Time. We are expecting new iPhones, of course, and we are also expecting new AirPods and hopefully new Macs, although it's not yet 100% confirmed. So this is when the event is going to be September 9. And at the same time, you can see the Apple event page has been added on YouTube, which leads us into the discussion of when this update is going to be released. So since the Apple event is going to take place on September 9th, it's about uh, two weeks away, September 9th, that's when the Apple event is going to take place. Usually we get the release candidate version of like the most updates, which is going to be iOS 18, Mac OS 15. It's not yet 100% certain if on September 9, we are going to get the release candidate versions of a iOS 18.1 and Mac OS 15.1, but you can look forward to some sort of release candidate version slightly after the Apple event concludes. So on September 9, and hopefully on September 16, that's when we'll officially get the release of iOS 18, tvOS 18 and Mac OS Sequoia, although it's not yet certain if also iOS 18.1 and Mac OS 15.1 will be released on the 16th, but that's just my quick two cents right here. While trying to pop up or bring up the calendar, I noticed another change that I had not been able to find. So the edit widget button has been relocated from the bottom of the widget to the top. And at the same time, there's if you have a lot of notifications at the top, you have the ability to be able to clear them right there. So those are most of the new features and changes that are here with Mac OS 15.1 and Mac OS 15 beta 8. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. Subscribe and I will see you in the next update pretty soon. Peace.